Uh, it's our great pleasure to resume our seminar. We had a short break for August, and now we start our series of next series of this year seminars. We have already scheduled seminars till I guess end of November. So you are most welcome to look at our seminars web page and check for the lectures scheduled. Uh, but for today lecture we have our first speaker and I would like to uh, I guess Ladislav will be leading this seminar. So Ladislav, can you present the speaker and please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, can it's my me? great pleasure to, to present to you uh, Professor Alexey Ripkin from the University of Alaska, USA. And uh, he will speak about Norman Constants. Okay, the title is on the screen. So please, Alexey, go ahead. Okay, thank you for in inviting me. It's a pleasure to speak at your uh, seminar. And I have seen uh, 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 some uh, uh, names uh, who are, uh, uh, of people I uh, met before and know well. And uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so uh, my talk uh, will be about uh, integrable systems and uh, uh, some interesting problems related to integrable systems. And more specifically, uh, 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 I will uh, discuss uh, what norming uh, or bound states, positive bound states, do uh, to uh, the Kortweg de Vries equation. And uh, uh, so a little bit of uh, uh, history and what uh, the object is. Uh, so uh, I'm concerned with uh, the uh, Kortweg de Vries equation, KDV for short which was uh, derived in 1895, uh, well over 100 years ago, by Kurt Wecker de Vries, two uh, uh, Dutch uh, mathematicians. And uh, in uh, the reduced form, uh, it looks really uh, uh, simple. It's a third order uh, uh, PDE with uh, quadratic nonlinearity. And uh, we are going to consider this equation on the whole real line uh, 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 and assume uh, that the initial profile or initial data is, um, is given. Uh, and uh, so this equation uh, looks really uh, easy, but unfortunately uh, it doesn't yield uh, much. Uh, as is, as you uh, try to uh, deal with it in a straightforward uh, manner. Uh, and it was uh, long after Kortweg de Vries derived this equation, uh, which uh, was derived to describe uh, uh, certain types of waves, uh, water waves. Uh, it was uh, dormant uh, for decades uh, because no one uh, knew how. Uh, uh, how to to crank it open, and uh, it was uh, uh, due to Fermi, Ulam, uh, and Pasta, uh, who actually derived a similar equation, of kind of discretized version of the, of the KDV, to describe uh, plasma, and what they observed uh, was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, they couldn't uh, explain. And uh, it prompted uh, uh, some study of this equation, but the actual breakthrough occurred uh, only in 1967 when Gardner, Green, Krusko, and Miura discovered uh, what we now know the inverse scattering transform or IST. And, uh, uh, and it uh, uh, originated to the theory, which we uh, now call. Uh, uh, Salaton theory, and uh, shortly after uh, inverse scattering transform was extended to many other uh, nonlinear systems. And uh, now let me briefly discuss what inverse scattering transform is actually is. Well, it consists of uh, uh, three uh, steps. Uh, the first step is so-called direct uh, transform. Uh, what we do, we take the initial profile or initial function, 
and form uh, the full line uh, Schrodinger uh, operator. Here it is. Um, and uh, so what we call the direct scattering or perhaps spectral problem. So the uh, given potential, we find the state of uh, data. And uh, which transforms uh, under what we call KDV's uh, flow or KDV turns uh, uh, the simple scattering uh, data or scattering data into simple first order uh, linear ODE. So it's uh, time evolution. And then uh, inverse transform. So given scattering data transformed or time evolved uh, scattering data, uh, we find uh, the potential which corresponds to it. And this potential actually solves uh, the KDV equation. So that's what uh, inverse scattering transform is. And conceptually, it's uh, similar to Fourier transform, but uh, one would call it nonlinear uh, Fourier transform. And uh, uh, this mechanism uh, runs smoothly uh, for pretty much only two types of profiles uh, or initial data. It's what uh, we call short range uh, uh, data. Uh, uh, that is the data which decays uh, fast enough at uh, spatial um, infinity or uh, periodic. In the case when uh, uh, not scattering data uh, is taken, but uh, spectral data. And uh, mm, uh, there are some uh, known cases in between uh, which are well studied, but, uh, uh, but uh, those two major type of profiles for which inverse scattering transform uh, runs uh, smoothly, we call them the standard uh, cases and uh, uh, since uh, late 60s, a lot of information uh, was uh, derived uh, or learned about uh, integrable systems uh, using uh, inverse scattering transform. And uh, one would uh, wonder uh, what is not known after uh, more than uh, 50 years. And uh, I would say that uh, almost everything If we deal with uh, uh, classic or standard initial data, and not much otherwise. And in fact, Vladimir Zaharov uh, repeatedly, it's one of the founding uh, fathers of Soliton theory, repeatedly asks, and it's exact quote, in spite of all these brilliant achievements, the theory of the KDV equation is not yet developed to a level which would satisfy a pragmatic physicist who may ask the following question. What happens if the initial data in the KDV equation is neither decaying at uh, infinity or periodic? Suppose that the initial data is a bounded function. Can we extend uh, the inverse scattering transform to this case, uh, which has a great practical importance. So this uh, uh, exact quote uh, says it all. And uh, let us discuss uh, what actually happens. Uh, why, uh, uh, why only two classical cases are well studied and not much uh, otherwise. Well, uh, uh, complications uh, uh, come at uh, every step of the inverse scattering transform procedure. And uh, uh, the first uh, complication is, of course, uh, the spectrum of uh, the Schrodinger operator uh, with a potential which is not uh, rapidly decaying, nor periodic. Uh, uh, the spectrum uh, uh, could be uh, uh, very complicated, uh, which uh, le uh, leaves no hope uh, that uh, the scattering problem or scattering theory uh, could be uh, developed. 
And then uh, uh, next uh, uh, problem uh, that uh, the uh, Lex uh, uh, pair, it's a, a, a pair of two, uh, two operators or two equations and the uh, key dv is the compatibility condition or, of, um, of these two equations. So it's, uh, they call it Lex pair. Uh, Lex pair no longer provides simple time evolution in, in general. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, then inverse scattering transform, which corresponds to the third uh, step in uh, inverse scattering transform, uh, is not uh, uh, developed outside of uh, uh, short range uh, situation. And last but not least is that well posedness for KDV equation. Uh, is not uh, known um, uh, much, is not studied much outside of um, uh, classical or standard cases. However, uh, it's well posed in L2, which is a famous uh, Bur uh, Burgain's result, uh, which was extended uh, 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 to H minus one a couple of years ago. Uh, so um, a, a lot of complications. Uh, uh, but if uh, we can solve uh, KDV using inverse scattering transform only in two cases, uh, then why uh, one would ask? Uh, uh, KDV is more integrable than any other generic uh, uh, PDE. And uh, it's a, uh, a, a good question, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, posed uh, by many uh, leading experts in the area. And, but, uh, uh, but not a lot of progress has uh, been done uh, so far. So uh, this area remains pretty much a virgin land. And uh, well, I'm not uh, going to solve the problem in this talk, of course, uh, uh, but I will uh, uh, going to address this important sub problem. And uh, to describe what exactly, I'm going to um, uh, to discuss. Uh, uh, let me review uh, uh, some known uh, results, and my results will be uh, related to potentials which decay uh, at infinity, but not fast enough. So, if uh, potential uh, decays as inverse uh, uh, square of x, uh, then inverse uh, scattering transform. Uh, uh, breaks down because uh, the inverse scattering problem uh, uh, cannot be solved uniquely. And the first example was provided by Abraham uh, in Pirel uh, back in 1981. Uh, but, but if uh, uh, the potential decays uh, even slower, uh, slower than uh, one OX, uh, then uh, dense a single spectrum may, uh, may appear, which fills uh, the positive half line. So there is no room for scattering uh, theory at all, because there is no absolute continu absolutely continuous spectrum. And uh, uh, the situation isn't um, uh, as bad uh, when it comes to uh, minus infinity. At minus infinity, any kind of decay or pattern of behavior can be uh, can be lifted, as what uh, was shown in uh, my paper with uh, Sergey Grudsky. Uh, so uh, the main issue then is the behavior of the potential at uh, spatial plus infinity. Well, and uh, and now closer to what uh, I'm actually going to address in my talk. This is a, a question uh, uh, posed uh, by Vladim um, uh, Matveev, and I'm going to give an exact quote again. A very interesting unsolved problem is to study the large time behavior 
of the solutions to the KDV equation corresponding to the smooth initial data uh, uh, like this. The related inverse scattering problem is not yet solved, and the study of the related large time evolution is a very challenging problem. And uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, initial data I'm going to deal with. And uh, uh, so decay here, as you uh, uh, can see, is, is inversely proportional to X, uh, but corrected by uh, this oscillatory uh, uh, function. Uh, uh, such potentials in general uh, are referred to as uh, Wigner von Neumann uh, type potentials. And uh, this type of potentials was introduced by uh, uh, these two uh, uh, famous scholars back in 1929. And uh, um, uh, as an example of a potential uh, which supports a positive uh, bound state or positive uh, eigenvalue, which is embedded into the uh, absolutely continuous spectrum. And uh, 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 such potential uh, is from L2, and uh, so according to Bourgain's famous well posed uh, results, uh, uh, KDV equation is well posed in L2. So basically, uh, there is only unique uh, one solution, uh, but uh, the question is, uh, can we find it using inverse scattering transform? So uh, a little bit uh, more uh, uh, about uh, such potentials in uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, I considered a specific case of such potential. I'm not giving it uh, its explicit construction, which behaves like this. So it's indeed a uh, 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 von Neumann type uh, uh, potential and uh, showed you, uh, using limiting arguments uh, uh, that uh, that there is an uh, explicit procedure to solve inverse, uh, to solve a KDV equation with such uh, potential using inverse uh, scattering transform. And uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, in 1929, uh, Wigner Neumann uh, considered a similar uh, but potential, not exactly uh, the same one I did, uh, uh, where uh, uh, the quotient of A, which we can, can call an amplitude and omega frequency, is equal to uh, minus eight. And, uh, uh, and this uh, potential supports a positive bound state. In general, it may occur uh, when uh, uh, I should put uh, uh, A here, when uh, the quotient of A and omega uh, is greater than two, then such a potential may support an embedded uh, bound state, but it doesn't have to. And in most of cases, uh, cases uh, it doesn't, but instead uh, uh, there is a so-called Wigner uh, Neumann resonance uh, at this point. So, which can uh, be uh, transformed into bound state and, uh, with a small perturbation or killed with a uh, small perturbation. Uh, uh, interesting feature of such potential, if A, again, it's a misprint, A uh, over omega is greater than one over radical of two, uh, then as uh, Martin uh, Klaus showed in 1982, uh, uh, that uh, such potentials may have infinite uh, infinite uh, uh, negative uh, discrete spectrum and uh, and finite otherwise well 
And now, uh, let me introduce uh, the main ingredients. I'm not sure I will have time to go over uh, 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 proofs, but at least I'm going to discuss uh, the main ingredients. So, uh, so uh, the order of those ingredients is, uh, is not essential. Uh, so uh, while M function, while uh, uh, solution and while M function are important in my consideration. So uh, a potential Q is said to be in uh, Y limit point at uh, plus or minus infinity if uh, uh, the Schrodinger equation uh, has a, um, a square integrable solution called Y uh, solution uh, at plus or minus infinity uh, respectively uh, for any uh, uh, lambda from the upper half plane. Uh, there are no uh, uh, necessary and sufficient conditions or uh, any kind of criteria for Q to be in limit point case, but uh, there are some uh, sufficient conditions. And uh, uh, the one uh, which we would uh, uh, use is uh, uh, that uh, the potential uh, is uh, essentially bounded from below. That would uh, guarantee uh, the wire limit point case. But uh, potential don't have to uh, decay uh, at all. And the following uh, lemma uh, will be um, uh, crucially uh, uh, used in my proof. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, consider the uh, Schrodinger equation where it is energy and assume that it has a, a, a real uh, a s a solution in integrable, square integrable at plus in infinity for some positive E. And let us uh, assume that uh, uh, the while uh, solution uh, has a limit at this point from uh, from above, from uh, the upper half plane. Uh, uh, then, uh, while so, uh, lim uh, the limit of the while solution at E and you uh, not are linearly dependent. And uh, one more uh, ingredient, uh, well-known ingredient in the while M function, which is defined as uh, uh, the log uh, derivative. Typically, it's considered that the fixed point X taken uh, to be zero. So uh, this uh, uh, function is called value M function, and it's very important in uh, uh, in the spectral theory of uh, ordinary partial uh, ordinary um, uh, order to differential equations, and uh, it, its three-dimensional analog uh, would be the Dirichlet to Neumann uh, map. And uh, the next uh, I'm, uh, reflection uh, uh, coefficient. Let me uh, introduce uh, uh, first uh, uh, the basic conditions I'm going to impose on my uh, Q or initial data. Uh, that it's locally integrable uh, and real. And then uh, the corresponding uh, Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger operator is semi-bounded from below. That's to, pr uh, to provide uh, the existence uh, of um, uh, unique existence of wired solution. And uh, and uh, and decay at plus infinity, uh, which uh, will be stated as follows: uh, that. Uh, the Schrodinger equation has uh, the right your solution at plus infinity. It means uh, uh, that for large X, uh, the solution behaves as plane wave. And as I said, uh, it does 
uh, existence of your solution at plus infinity assumes uh, decay at plus infinity of the potential. And uh, uh, this three, uh, more specifically, the third condition uh, implies uh, that the runs uh, that uh, uh, psi and its uh, conjugate uh, uh, form a fundamental set for the Schrodinger equation, and the Vron scan uh, of uh, 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 these two solutions is equal to to i k. Of course, the Vron scan must be independent of uh, uh, oops, must be independent of x, uh, but more specifically for uh, the while solution is equal to two i k. And uh, and uh, what it means uh, that uh, any while uh, solution uh, at uh, minus infinity uh, can be represented, or any solution uh, to uh, to the Schrodinger equation can be represented as a linear combination of these two uh, 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 functions, and. Uh, since in our situation, because of these conditions, condition two, uh, uh, there is a left uh, 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 wire solution. Uh, uh, we normalize it. It's defined up to a, a multiple. Uh, uh, can be normalized by this condition. Uh, with some function R. Which is uh, which is called a right reflection coefficient. The, uh, this uh, equation uh, uh, is also uh, called sometimes basic scattering identity or fundamental scattering um, identity. The function which appears here, uh, uh, as I said, uh, co uh, called reflection coefficient, it has uh, two important properties: symmetry and uh, uh, contractive property, its modulus doesn't exceed one. And the next uh, ingredient uh, will be uh, uh, diagonal Green's function. Uh, 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 so uh, um, I'm assuming uh, that Q is just integrable at plus infinity. And this condition provides uh, the existence of your uh, 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 sol uh, solution. And uh, but if we relax to this condition, if the potential is no longer L1 at plus infinity, uh, then uh, your solution could still exist, but it may uh, gain so-called spectral singularities. Uh, if potential uh, is uh, decaying fast enough plus infinity, then your function as a function of k is, is nice. But uh, when decay uh, becomes slower, uh, the property of uh, the use function uh, becomes uh, poorer and it may gain uh, what they call spectral singularities, points where the function actually blows up, real points, k, where function blows up. And um, uh, the best way to deal with such singularities is to introduce uh, the diagonal green function, uh, which in, uh, uh, in my case uh, uh, is equal uh, to the product of uh, two uh, while functions divided by uh, two i k, where again psi is uh, the uh, just uh, not just uh, while function on the left, and the psi is just function on the right. And the importance of uh, uh, of the diagonal Green's function is due to uh, the following three uh, properties. It's uh, analytic with respect to k squared. k uh, squared is energy, and uh, it moves uh, upper half plane to the upper half plane. Such functions are called uh, Herglotz functions. And uh, all poles, uh, mm, it may have uh, 
uh, real polls, whatever it it, uh, it uh, simple polls, in, I call them embedded polls. Uh, and all polls, embedded polls, uh, are uh, eigen uh, values or eigen or bound states of the Schrodinger operator. And uh, last but not least is uh, that uh, the potential can be recovered by the asymptotic behavior of the diagonal uh, uh, green function. So should be uh, lowercase uh, g here by the following uh, formula. And uh, uh, one more important uh, 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 ingredient is norming constants of negative bound states. This is well known uh, material. I have to uh, review it to make a bridge between uh, what is known and what I'm going to study. So what is a norming uh, constant uh, of a negative bound state? Uh, uh, well, if uh, potential Q uh, decays fast enough uh, at minus infinity two, and uh, there is a, a left, what we call left Yost uh, uh, solution, uh, um, uh, then we can take in the basic uh, uh, scattering identity function phi to be equal to some function T of K, times the Yost solution. Uh, function T of K is called the transmission coefficient. It's a very important quantity uh, in what we call scattering uh, matrix. And uh, uh, it can be explicitly computed in terms of uh, two Yost solutions by this formula. And this formula says uh, that, uh, 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 that uh, the transmission coefficient is uh, is meromorphic function in the upper half plane with uh, poles, uh, the poles where xi minus and xi plus become linearly dependent, and those uh, points are actually, of course, uh, are bound states or mm, uh, positive, negative bound states of the Schrodinger operator. And uh, those points, of course, uh, uh, the diagonal green uh, function has a pole uh, singularity. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to introduce uh, the norming constant by the following um, equation. Uh, uh, so uh, function, uh, the residue uh, of function phi at uh, uh, kappa sub n, and again, minus kappa sub n uh, uh, squared is uh, the uh, negative eigenvalue. Uh, is there, uh, uh, so the residue of this function is related to the value of the uh, uh, Yost function at plus infinity, or right Yost function, by the following relation. And uh, the coefficient, positive coefficient, uh, which appears here, uh, is, uh, is referred as uh, the norming constant of uh, bound state minus kappa, kappa sub n squared. That only finitely many bound states for short range uh, potentials. Uh, uh, more commonly, uh, uh, norming constants are. Uh, are defined by this formula, but uh, this uh, form is uh, the one which uh, uh, provides a good starting point uh, to uh, include positive bound states into our consideration. That's what I'm going to do next. Norming constant of positive bound states. Well, uh, mm, uh, I'm going to concentrate uh, uh, on uh, Wigner Neyman type potentials, um, only of which uh, the main reason is because uh, this kind of uh, slow decay potentials, which is well, quite well understood. And uh, I would refer uh, to uh, this paper, which uh, is 
pretty much fundamental to my research. And uh, I'm going to con uh, uh, consider uh, uh, the uh, the case uh, when uh, the right uh, used uh, uh, function blows up uh, uh, at omega uh, at this rate. And uh, uh, since uh, uh, the diagonal green function may only have a simple singularity, it means uh, uh, that uh, the uh, uh, left Yost, uh, uh, actually it's not Yost, it's Y uh, solution, uh, is not zero at omega squared, and then uh, omega is what we call resonance. And uh, then it would uh, be embedded uh, uh, bound uh, uh, state. It means uh, uh, that bound state embedded into a positive, absolutely continuous uh, 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 spectrum. And the, uh, the problem uh, with the appearance of such a state is uh, that the reflection coefficient uh, uh, cannot actually tell bound state from a resonance. And we need to introduce an extra uh, 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 condition which six fixes uh, this ambiguity. And I'm going to introduce it uh, in a similar to this equation manner. Oops. More specifically, uh, now uh, uh, the uh, the used function has a pole type singularity, a uh, real singularity at omega, and it's uh, a residue. It's not exactly the residue. I would say it's the um, uh, 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 limited multiplied by k minus omega at this point, but uh, but it's uh, it's you can treat it as residue. Uh, is related to the uh, uh, to the uh, Weil solution at minus infinity by the following formula. I call uh, this condition embedded uh, pole condition. And uh, uh, alpha here is a positive constant, and R is the reflection coefficient computed at uh, the resonance point. The reason why I uh, write uh, this, it's a constant, why I uh, write uh, this way uh, will be clear from, uh, uh, from uh, future considerations. And the last uh, ingredient, which is actually very important uh, ingredient, so last but not least, is a, a gauge transformation. So, uh, uh, gauge transformation is known, well-known uh, object in uh, in Southern theory, uh, and uh, the uh, way uh, I introduce here is very different uh, uh, from uh, what is typically used, but convenient, totally equivalent and uh, uh, convenient. So, uh, if uh, function phi and uh, phi and psi are related by uh, basic scattering identity, uh, then functions uh, uh, phi tilde, psi, uh, psi tilde introduced by this formula would also uh, uh, related by the same basic scatter identity with the same reflection coefficient for any uh, uh, real uh, function of x and function f sub n of x and k such that it's real for a real k. So almost no condition. Of course, I will pick up a specific uh, function f sub n. And now uh, with all those ingredients, uh, I'm able to to uh, state uh, uh, the main uh, the main result. So uh, uh, assume uh, uh, 
uh, that uh, our basic conditions are uh, satisfied, uh, the three conditions which I introduced uh, uh, before. And on top of that, we introduced two more uh, conditions, a resonance condition. Uh, 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 for the finitely many uh, omega uh, positive um, omegas, uh, the Schrodinger equation uh, has a unique, up to, of course, uh, a scale multiple L2 uh, solution at minus infinity. And next condition is continuity condition. Uh, so, uh, uh, function uh, psi and r again uh, write your solution oops write your solution and reflection coefficient are continuous at uh, all resonance points then uh, uh, the following function is square integrable at minus infinity it can't be integral with plus infinity, but it's uh, square integral with minus infinity. Uh, and uh, 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 the following uh, potential or Schrodinger operator or the following potential, I explain what is what, supports uh, uh, embedded bound states at uh, these points. And what is what here? Uh, so uh, G plus is uh, uh, the matrix uh, formed uh, out of uh, uh, this function by the following uh, formula. So it's pretty much a uh, uh, gram the, the matrix. And the uh, lambda uh, alpha sub n and uh, uh, alpha sub n uh, uh, are arbitrary constants non-zero constants. So in other words, if we have a, a potential uh, subject to these two conditions, uh, um, we can construct a new potential by this formula, which would have uh, embedded bound states at uh, these fixed points. Well, and uh, a little bit of history, uh, uh, so that uh, the transform uh, uh, between these two functions is uh, actually nothing but uh, the binary uh, Darboux transformed uh, transform introduced by uh, Babich and uh, Matvey back in 1986 in the context of uh, Cadence uh, KP equation. And uh, interestingly enough. Uh, in 1978, uh, a totally different approach to binary uh, Darboux transform uh, 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 was put forward by uh, uh, Dive. What is uh, more even interesting uh, that uh, the idea uh, uh, was introduced without using any of what uh, they call double commutation arguments uh, was uh, uh, discovered by Gelfand and Levitan in 1951. So uh, uh, this kind of uh, transform has a long uh, uh, history in different communities. Uh, and for some reason, uh, uh, both things uh, were used uh, uh, independently in different communities. Uh, it was uh, studied in great uh, detail uh, in the series of works of uh, Fritz Gestesi in the uh, 90s, and uh, here I would uh, uh, cite his paper with uh, Gerald uh, uh, Tessel, uh, published in 1996, uh, where uh, double commutation method uh, read uh, binary Darbu transform uh, was studied in uh, great uh, uh, detail. And uh, 
we actually rediscovered a binary uh, Darbu transform, or actually um, not rediscovered, but re um, uh, um, found a new uh, approach to it. Uh, in our recent uh, uh, paper uh, based upon uh, Riemann uh, Hilbert problem approach. And this uh, um, is actually gave us uh, um, a bridge to, to study embedded bound states. And uh, um, again, there is uh, all the uh, literature uh, where some uh, formulas uh, 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 which originally were developed by Gil van der Levitan, uh, uh, while solving totally unrelated problem. Uh, uh, but uh, those things, uh, until recently, were uh, not connected uh, in, in one uh, theory. And uh, um, a little bit more about um, about eigenvalues, uh, or I would say eigenfunctions associated with uh, embedded eigenvalues. They can be all found uh, by solving uh, this uh, linear system. It's a linear, uh, it's a system of uh, n linear equations uh, on, uh, uh, on eigenfunctions. And, uh, for n equal 1, uh, uh, the L2 norm of y is 1, uh, and uh, the potential has uh, this form. So it's pretty much uh, explicit. And uh, if you uh, compute the asymptotic uh, 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 of uh, this function when uh, x goes to infinity, then it would be a sum of Neumann, uh, Wigner von Neumann type of potentials. And the difference is also actually uh, uh, continuous. Uh, uh, so uh, while q of x need not be continuous, but the difference between the two um, uh, 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 is continuous. And it's, it's also integrable at uh, minus infinity, uh, but behaves as 1 over x, as uh, this shows, at plus infinity. And uh, 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 what uh, the theorem also says is uh, that uh, embedded bound states cannot be created uh, on short range background because uh, in order to be able to create uh, an embedded bound state, we have to have a resonance. And the resonance uh, uh, at the point of resonance, the reflection coefficient has modulus one. So, and uh, as we know, a reflection coefficient uh, has modulus uh, one only at zero in the short range case. So, in other words, embedded bound states cannot be created out of uh, uh, on the on mm, short range background. And um, one um, um, important uh, uh, corollary, which answers a question uh, which was uh, posed by uh, uh, by Rowan uh, Killip. So if we assume uh, uh, that uh, that Q satisfies uh, the conditions of the main theorem, and on top of it, it has. Uh, 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 it, uh, it's short range at plus infinity. Uh, and, uh, and then if uh, S sub Q uh, is scattering data associated with uh, Q, and then uh, uh, this set 
uh, here we add uh, bound states, positive bound states, and associated uh, norming constant uh, would be uh, uh, the scattering data uh, uh, for uh, transformed uh, potential. So indeed, uh, we need to add uh, uh, this information to the scattering data uh, to uh, make our scattering data indeed scattering data, which would determine the potential uniquely. And uh, now another uh, imp uh, main uh, theorem on bounded positons. So, so far, even though uh, uh, the whole thing was developed in the uh, context uh, of the KDV equation, but uh, there was no KDV equation so far uh, used. Now it's time to uh, introduce a, a time uh, evolution. So uh, assume uh, that uh, the initial uh, data of the KDV equation is, uh, is as in the main theorem, and uh, it is uh, square integral, uh, it's a short range at uh, uh, plus infinity. And uh, th uh, 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 then, uh, 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 what was uh, 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 proven uh, in uh, um, in my work uh, with Sergei Grodsky is uh, that uh, KDV equation can be extended to such uh, initial profiles. So by uh, developing uh, what we call uh, right-sided scattering theory. And uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, we can introduce uh, uh, the time evolved uh, Yost uh, uh, solution, and uh, uh, and of course time evolved uh, reflection coefficient, which would be would evolved uh, over time by the following formula. And this way we can uh, introduce uh, uh, a real function uh, phi sub n. And once uh, uh, we do so and form uh, uh, the gram matrix uh, G plus out of uh, these functions, uh, uh, then uh, the potential given by this formula uh, denoted by uh, Q sub plus N to indicate that it has N uh, embedded bound states. Uh, solve uh, the KDV equation uh, uh, with the data which corresponds to uh, this scattering data. Uh, and uh, bound uh, states, uh, uh, positive bound states, uh, omega sub n squared, uh, remain embedded, a bound state for all times. Uh, Vladimir uh, Matveev asked, uh, repeatedly asked the following question. Uh, the interesting uh, question whether non-singular uh, positron solution exists in the uh, continuous integrable uh, system, uh, integrable uh, models remains open as yet. So uh, what this question actually uh, asks or says, uh, a positron solution is a solution that corresponds to a, a positive bound state or embedded uh, bound state. That's why it's called positon. And, uh, um, and until recently, positron solution uh, uh, was studied, but uh, uh, that solution was highly singular. It has a moving double pole singularity on the real line. And the question is, if uh, 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 there are solutions which correspond to positive bound states, but which remain uh, remain bounded. So uh, the, uh, this equation gives an example of a bounded positive solution. So the answer is yes. 
Matveev also uh, asked if uh, it could be uh, made uh, with uh, uh, trivial scattering data. I don't believe uh, that it, uh, it can be done, but uh, but uh, uh, my approach doesn't allow me to answer this question. And uh, Dmitry uh, Pelinovsky uh, also asked me if embedded bound states disappear over time, and uh, the answer is no, as uh, the previous theorem says. And uh, also, uh, Dmitry Pelinovsky um, um, asked me uh, uh, if uh, embedded bound states have any impact on uh, uh, on the time evolution of the KDV equation, that is propagation of embedded soliton in the direction of linear dispersive uh, waves. Uh, what he refers to embedded soliton is uh, could be called bounded uh, positon, and uh, and the answer is yes, uh, indeed. Uh, they present uh, uh, waves uh, which uh, um, uh, move to the left in the opposite direction, the direction from the uh, solitons, and with uh, this velocity. And uh, I'm kind of running uh, um, out of time, so uh, uh, so um, uh, 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 recently in the paper I already uh, mentioned, which was a bridge to actually to study uh, embedded bound states. Uh, uh, a similar formula was uh, found for, which is ac actually a known, well-known formula, but uh, found with a different approach uh, for uh, uh, for solitons. And if you look at this formula, and you if you look at uh, this formula, then you see the striking similarity between these two formulas, suggesting that bounded. Uh, um, uh, positons actually behave similarly to solitons, but they move in the opposite direction. And what's uh, also interesting uh, about uh, positive um, eigen uh, values, uh, they don't change the uh, transition coefficient. And they don't change uh, uh, conservation laws either. So momentum, uh, you see uh, the integral, uh, the, the total momentum remains the same and energy remains uh, the same. And uh, uh, this theorem says that actually you can not only create positive bound states, uh, but you can also uh, uh, purge uh, or appear or remove them. And uh, I'm going to skip, uh, since uh, my time is almost up, I'm going to skip three pages of uh, uh, the arguments, not complete proofs, but arguments, and uh, now discuss perhaps what uh, such a solution may look like. This is actually still work in uh, progress, and I'm going to show um, a numerical uh, simulation. So that's what uh, it does. I pick up uh, a specific profile which has one a positive bound state. And what's, it's what it does uh, over time. So one more time. So some uh, solitons uh, move to the uh, right and one kind of blo uh, bulb, I don't, uh, uh, don't know the name, don't have a name for it, uh, moves to the left. Uh, the uh, question uh, remains, if it 
actually what uh, it does over time. It looks like it's decaying, uh, but well, I can't uh, deal with infinite uh, uh, infinite lines, so I had to truncate the potential. And of course, uh, once I truncate the potential, everything would be decaying. So I don't really know what this thing does. And uh, it remains uh, a good question what it does over time if it decays or not. And that was an open question stated by Dmitry Pilonovsky. Uh, if it decays over time or not, I don't know. I'm working on it. But in any case, uh, it could be viewed if uh, you switch uh, time and x to opposite. The KDV equation is the is the uh, is invariant with respect to such transformation. Uh, it would. Uh, give us a model of a rogue wave. Assume that uh, they decay at infinity, so we can uh, basically use that profile and uh, launch its time evolution. And it would uh, create uh, a bounded uh, 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 rogue wave at some point. So think of this uh, picture moving in the opposite direction. So uh, here uh, I state you know, two open questions. Uh, what uh, KDV does to uh, embed bound states if uh, it decays over time? or not. In either case, uh, I guess uh, it is a new type of solution. The problem with the study of this solution is uh, that the powerful uh, method of nonlinear steepest descent uh, by Dyfe and Jero, uh, breaks down uh, for such potentials because the reflection coefficient uh, e, e modulus becomes zero at uh, omega, and, and I was not able to fix it. However, uh, there is a recent progress due to uh, Alexander Budilin, uh, published in 2020, which uh, it gives a good idea uh, that this problem can actually be solved. And uh, thank you uh, very much for your attention. This is uh, uh, Denali. It's uh, the tallest uh, peak in North America, over 5,000 uh, meters, and it's kind of our trademark. Major tourist attraction. Thank you very much, Alexei, for, for the very interesting talk. Thank you. And probably there are questions. May uh, uh, ask you uh, a quick yes. question because uh, I, I don't see if there is any hand. Uh, at the moment, uh, if uh, uh, some of these results are available for for the Zaharov Shavat system, or uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a good uh, it uh, it is a good question. I'm sure uh, uh, that it can be done, uh, but um, uh, spectral uh, spectral um, singularities uh, in general not well understood in any other. Um, integrable system, for instance, in NLS. Mm -hmm. uh, they appear uh, in the context of NLS, uh, even for short range, even uh, for Schwartz type uh, data, but uh, uh, but quite unstable. 
So, uh, uh, so it uh, looks like uh, what people do, they assume that um, there are no such points um, uh, and, and then proceed. So I, uh, I'm not aware of any uh, work uh, on um, uh, which would study a such situation in an NLS uh, context, suggesting that uh, that perhaps uh, it's not uh, understood uh, for you know, Zaharov Shabbat systems either. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions, please. I have a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Alexey, my question is, um, uh, in all your movies, I see breezers uh, have no really great amplitudes to, uh, on the uh, background. In this case, it's not rogue waves. Uh, Perhaps uh, only in the initial uh, time you have... Uh, equivalent of rogue waves, but not in time evolution. Yeah, well, it's a good uh, uh, question. Let me, uh, uh, again, let me. Okay, maybe stop. Uh, okay, okay, let me, uh, let me stop. Stop it for a mm -hmm. sec. All right. Uh, so, uh, if uh, this uh, blob uh, disappears over time, it is normal evolution of uh, like dispersive wave packet with decreased amplitudes. For rogue waves, we need to have really a breather or group of waves with uh, almost uh, small background. Yeah, but My if opinion, you... only your red line, red and uh, bl black line, in this time moment, it's like rogue wave. Yeah, but if you uh, if you evolve uh, this thing over time, and assuming uh, that actually it decays, I I don't know yet if it decays, but assume it, it decays, that it means uh, 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 that you can consider uh, uh, a new initial uh, profile, uh, uh, which uh, uh, would be. Uh, almost zero everywhere but over uh, but since uh, the kdv equation uh, is the is invariant with respect to replacing x with minus x and t with minus t you will see uh, as this bulb big bulb uh, would uh, uh, form out of a very placid initial uh, background and the amplitude would be indeed uh, very large. And it would remain bounded as opposed to Matveev's uh, positons, it would remain bounded at all times, but with a very large amplitude at some point. Formally, Matveev positon is singular. Yeah. It's, of course, uh, uh, conserves its shape, but in your uh, case, yeah. it is like intermediate asymptotics. Of right, uh, uh, right. It doesn't, uh, uh, the, uh, imb uh, the pole, double pole, actually doesn't disappear over time. Mm -hmm. So in his model, uh, uh, indeed, uh, 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 this singularity moves to the left with the same velocity as uh, bounded positons. Uh, so that's why uh, one may conjecture uh, that this bulb actually doesn't disappear over time. It would uh, keep on moving to the left. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, it is a possibility. Uh, you see, embedded bound state is actually a very unstable thing to begin with. Uh, uh, so it's a, a result in a very subtle interference of different uh, oscillations. So it is very unstable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so that's why 
uh, you know, uh, in reality, uh, this movie uh, isn't accurate, meaning that this bulb doesn't disappear over time, but keeps on moving to the left, which would answer your son's question. <laughs> It would be a totally different type of solution, but if it de still decays, it would give an example of a, a rogue wave. Uh, placid, uh, placid initial data uh, uh, would form a bulb at some point. Okay, thank you. And and then uh, uh, then it would uh, uh, again. Uh, break apart, but kind of slowly, not instantaneously. If you are talking about, say, another example would be uh, would be provided by delta initial um, uh, delta function initial profile. That one also breaks down into es uh, oscillatory uh, decaying uh, train, uh, uh, but would uh, again produce um, a singularity. Uh, here, there is no singularity. But delta uh, data, uh, delta function provides uh, bounded first integral, but not second one. But here, yeah, right. as uh, I understand, both integrals are. Yeah, uh, that is correct. Yeah. Yep, that is correct. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. More questions? Comments. May I ask question? May I ask question about the yes. picture with the mountain? With mm -hmm. the mountain, have you tried to climb this mountain on the picture you showed us? What, say it again, please. I am speaking about the mountain that you showed us. The very uh, beautiful, uh, about what, very beautiful uh, picture uh, of the mountain. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. You showed uh -huh. at the end of the presentation. Have you tried to climb this? Uh, to go up to the mountain, no? Uh, um, oh, mountain. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, 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 sorry. Right. Oh, I, uh, can you can you approach it at least? Can you? I, uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's unrelated to <laughs> KG equation. However, you can consider it's an initial profile. Uh, well, yeah. um, uh, about uh, a few hundred people should climb it. Uh, every year, uh, uh -huh. the um, uh, uh, the um, the window for it is one month uh, in May, early June, and uh, people fly. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, there is a base camp uh, somewhere. I haven't been there, and people uh, actually fly there on small planes. Uh, you can uh, perhaps uh, walk to it, but there are no roads leading to it. It's as I close see. as you can get to it. So I it's uh, uh, it's a so-called mirror lake. It's mirror uh, uh, mirror lake, and uh, yeah, on I good see. weather, uh, uh, there is a perfect reflection, but not on this uh, picture. It's as good picture as I could uh, get, and it's about. Uh, distance wise it's uh, it's about 60 kilometers from it <laughs> so it's not close maybe maybe even uh, uh, close to 100 kilometers yeah, yeah so it's very, not very, very beautiful picture thank you yes and uh, actually i can see it from on good weather from my office <laughs> great okay thank so you so that's why you you can manage to have such nice results i guess Having such a nice picture. Thank you. Thank you. It helps. It presenting. helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So, if there are no more questions, then thank you very much, Alexei, for accepting this invitation and for the very interesting talk. So thank it's you. It's actually thank the you. first time I uh, deliver this talk, uh, uh, so I see now that I try to put too much in it. <laughs> Or perhaps explain too much. <laughs> uh, so, okay. uh, thank you for uh, being my first audience uh, uh, for this piece of research. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to all participants.
See you in two weeks. Right. Okay, thank you. you.